Hello there. I'm going to show you today how to get started quickly in Sibelius. I'm going to presume that you've already downloaded the Sibelius application. Now on a Mac you'll find that in your Applications folder. And to get there, you're going to click on your hard drive in your upper right corner and you have applications here. Now make sure that your view is set here. Now there's four different types of view on a Mac. List view, column view, icon view, and cover flow. Make sure you're set to the second from the left. This is icon view, which is rather confusing. You just have tons of icons. Column view which splits your view up into different columns. So if, for instance, we go to Adobe Acrobat Pro, it'll show what's inside the folder. And cover flow. So make sure your view is set to list view. So set the second from the left. And also make sure you're in alphabetical order here. By name, that's Z to A, and this is A to Z. So now we're going to search for a Sibelius application. And this is where it'll be. And to open it, you're going to double click it. And you see it's flashing on my dock. I keep my dock on the left instead of at the bottom. It's easy enough to move my dock to the bottom, which I'll do now so you could view it similar to probably the way you're set up. I'm going to push shift and pull. Now, this is opened up in um, Quick Start, which is very useful. We have uh, several different scores here, but we're going to scroll down the piano score. There's also lead sheet. We have orchestra scores, jazz band, big band, combos, jazz quartet. But we're going to go to the bottom and open the piano score. I'm going to click once. And it set at 4-4 as a default. You could change it to 3-4 or cut time or any time signature you like. We'll leave it at 4-4 and we'll click create. So here we have a piano score. I want to talk to you briefly about opening and closing the ribbon. The ribbon is this area right up here. And this is where the meat of the Sibelius program is. We have all these different tabs to play around with. And the way you open and close the ribbon in case um, it's closed is there's a little green arrow here and you close and open it there and also if you go to any of the tabs and single click it'll open momentarily as soon as you click on the score it closes now if you go to a tab and you double click it stays open and there's a fourth way to open and close the tab that's with the keyboard shortcut of Command and F1. And that toggles the ribbon on and off. Now I like to see what instrument I'm working on in the left side of the staff or staves. So you go to Appearance and you'll see it says None here at Start. And you go to Full. And there we have Piano. Now I'm going to spread this out a little and there's a very good reason for it. Not everything is showing up here in the ribbon. So if we spread this out a little horizontally, we'll see everything in the ribbon, which is super useful.
If you want to add instruments, you push the letter I on your computer keyboard. And let's say I want to add a voice. I would go to singers. Soprano. Click on it. Go to add the score and click. You can also search for the instrument name. Let's search for bass. So we're going to put in acoustical bass notation. Add the score. One other thing, we don't need both staves here, so I'm going to delete the bass clef stave, which is B. Treble clef is A. Delete from score. Yes. OK. Great. I'm going to spread this out a little. And to close this gap, I'll push the acoustic bass upwards. Now, if you want, you could triple click on the acoustic bass tab. And thus, when you push up, it'll rectify all of the staves at once. Same thing here. Triple click, you're selecting throughout the score. It's a good thing to know. There we go. Otherwise, you're just selecting one staff and you pull and, um, and it, things are getting a bit messy. Put that back where it was. I'd also like to show you quickly how not just to change the name here of the instrument, but actually change the instrument itself. Now when I opened this in Quick Start, it was originally a piano grand staff. So we have treble and bass clef. So when I play this back, it'll have a piano sound. But let's just suppose I want to use this for vocal and I don't like the piano sound and I want to have a vibraphone sound. What I would do is I would triple click the bass staff and push delete and now I just have the treble clef. Now in order to change the sound from piano to vibraphone I'm gonna triple click on the staff any place and that will select the entire staff from beginning to end. Then make sure you're on the home tab and you push change here we've already got vibraphone selected, but let's say it wasn't. We'll close this. And it was hard to find. I would just type in the first few letters. And there it comes up, vibraphone. And then you just click OK. And now we have the sound of a vibraphone as opposed to the piano sound. That's a neat trick to know. And we would change the name back to vocal. I selected it by dragging from right to left. And you just type in vocal and hit escape twice or click anywhere on the white part of the score. And that deselects everything. Pretty cool. Now in other lessons, I've covered a lot of what we're going to go over briefly, entering notes. You're going to go to view, panels, and keyboard. We'll use the keyboard for now. This is your keypad. You could turn that on and off here. Off, on. Also, any shortcuts will show up if you hover over the letters. And there you have. 
Option, Command, and K. Option, Command, K. And you see that toggles the keyboard on and off. Now a couple things before we get started. If you go to Preferences, Sibelius Preferences, and there's your shortcut, it's Command, Comma. You could go to Other and turn off the play music if you'd like. So Sibelius starts quietly. You push OK. Now let's say we want to go back to just the piano staff as if we were making a lead sheet. There's a couple ways to do that. You could push I on your computer keyboard again and you could delete these by pushing command and clicking on the two of them and delete from score and then pushing OK. But I'll show you another way. If I triple click on the soprano staff quickly and then push delete it'll ask this will delete all of the music on these staves. Do you also want to remove them from the file? Now click yes and it will delete the entire stave. Same thing for the acoustical bass. I'll triple click, push delete and yes. So we're back to piano here. And if you want to change the name to vocal, you just type it in by selecting it. Now I'll put that back to what it was by pushing Command Z, undo. All right, so now uh, we're going to enter a rest first. And Sibelius is set as far as time values uh, to a default of a quarter note. And now if I want to enter notes or rests, I'm going to select the first bar and push the letter N for new input and then push rest. Now I'm going to input three notes, E, F sharp, and G. This is middle C, C4. Another rest. And this time I'm going to input using the computer keyboard, E, F, and G. Now one thing, I've got an improper key signature here, seeing I know what the song is. So I'm going to push the letter K on my computer keyboard for key signature. But first I'm going to push escape twice really quickly to deselect everything in the score. Now I'm going to push K for key signature and I'm going to choose the key of G. Then I'm going to click where the key signature would be, and there it is. This note should be an F sharp. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to change it to a sharp right here in the keyboard. Cool. Now, I don't want the accidental to show up, so I'm going to push the sharp again. And there it is. Now it just belongs as an F sharp in the key. Great. I'm going to select this bar. And this time I want a dotted quarter. I'm going to push N for new input once again. There's the quarter. I'm going to push a dot. And I'm going to push an A on my keyboard. The next note is going to be an eighth note D. Right there. So let's go to the eighth note. And I'm going to push D on the computer keyboard. And I need two more quarter notes and I'm going to push enter for tie and now I want a whole note and I'll push D once again. Now all these D's have to be down an octave. I'm going to push escape twice to deselect everything. Select this D and push shift and now I'm going to push command and the down arrow and there we have the beginnings of a song. Now for playback, I'm going to go to the View tab again, Panels, and this time select Transport. And here's your playback.
Awesome. So that's the first few bars of Embraceable You. Now suppose I want to find this score again. I could go to File, Quick Start, and click Recent. And there I have the score that I made for it today. So I'm going to close this and show you how that works. This is saved. The way I could tell on a Mac is if I input another note. You see right here there's a little black dot and right here it's cloudy. That means it's not saved. Now I save every five minutes so I want you to do the same. That's all I'm willing to lose of my work is about five minutes. So I push command S constantly. And when you do, you'll see this icon is now solid. It's not transparent. And the little black dot had disappeared from this red circle. So that means it's saved. So we could safely close this file. Now where is it? It's in our scores folder. So I'm going to go back to the Macintosh hard drive. And fortunately, I have the scores folder here on the side. Now where is it? Where is the scores folder on a Mac? What I'm going to do is right click on the name Embraceable U here. And if you don't have a right click mouse, you could push Control and left click. And that brings up a contextual menu. And here's where your scores folder is. It's inside your Macintosh hard drive, inside your users folder, inside the house with your name, inside of documents. So we're going to close this now and find it. So we're going to go to the Macintosh hard drive which is normally up at your right top of your screen and double click on it. Here's users. Now I could have opened users by using the arrow but no I'm going to double click on users I'm going to double click on my house. I'm going to double click on documents. And again, the view should be the second icon from the left. Otherwise, it's confusing. It's too many icons, too many columns. And this view looks kind of like iTunes. So I'm taking the second from the left. And here's scores. I'm going to double click on it. And there's Embraceable U, as I told you, that's where it's saved. So you should always be able to find where you're saving any file, not just Sibelius, but a word processing file or an art file. So an easy way to open it is to double click on it. And there it is. Now you know how to find your file. Another way to save your file is to go to File, Save. And there's the shortcut that I was using, Command S. So let's push that. And sometimes instead of saving to Scores folder, I want to change where I'm going to save. And you do that by going to this pull down menu here. Now sometimes you don't see all these choices and it's because this little arrow is pushed. So we're going to push the upward facing arrow to give us more choices again. So in this case perhaps I want to save to the desktop. You would push desktop here. The pull down menu corresponds and then you push save. I'm going to cancel because I've already got a chart called Embraceable U that I'm working on. Now before I go I want to show you another neat trick and this is about keeping the Sibelius icon on your dock after you quit. 
or really any icon from any application on your dock. What you do is you go down to your Sibelius icon and you right click or control click on a Mac. And you'll see options here. And you go to keep in dock. And you can right click again and double check this. You see there's a check mark this time on the left of keep in dock. And that means when you quit Sibelius the icon will remain here. There's a second way of doing this. You could grab the Sibelius icon and drag it off the dock and place it to the left or to the right of where it was. Now I'm going to put that back and show you what not to do. If you just drag up and down, when you quit Sibelius this icon will disappear. So make sure you drag it at least over one to the right or the left. You could drag it as far as you'd like. I want to thank you so much for watching this short video on how to get started in Sibelius. If you enjoyed this there are other more comprehensive videos on how to work with Sibelius on my YouTube channel Richie Vitale. Thank you for watching. Thank you.